بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم You don't know how to speak. You don't know how to say hello. And you come in, it's a test at that point for your parents as well. You will be clothed. You will be looked after. You need to learn to talk. You need to learn manners. You need to learn faith. When you get to the age of puberty, you need to start asking questions. Why am I believing what I'm believing? Everyone needs to ask these questions, even Muslims. Believe me. It's wrong for us to think, you know what, you're a Muslim. Don't ask why are you believing what you're believing. Ask it. You will find the answers. Then you will be believing with Basira. Basira meaning you know why you are doing what you're doing. O oh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell them, this is my path. I call towards Allah, but upon knowledge, upon conviction, upon knowledge, upon foresight, upon that which Allah has blessed us with. I am calling towards Allah upon sound knowledge, myself and those who follow me. So we will all call towards Allah upon sound knowledge and say, I am not from amongst those who engage in polytheism. I worship Allah and Allah alone. It's an amazing verse of the Quran because it teaches us that you need to question. You need to know the answers so that you can give other people the answers. So someone says, for example, why am I praying five times a day? Go back and hunt the answer. It doesn't mean that I must leave it for now. No, find the answer and you will be able to get it. Sometimes you will understand logic and sometimes you will not understand the logic, although it's there. And sometimes it's a matter of belief. Allah testing you like Ibrahim, the prophet Abraham, the old Testament also declares that at a stage he was instructed to sacrifice his child. Okay, there is a dispute between the Muslims and the others as to who exactly the child was. We say that it's proven even from a historic point of view that it was Ismail. And the others say perhaps it was the other. But to be honest, Ishaq, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's peace and blessings be upon him too. To be honest, the fact is he was instructed to do something that did not make sense. And all heavenly religions agree with that. He was instructed to sacrifice his son. Did it make sense? No. No sense whatsoever, but the fact he knew it came from his maker. He surrendered to it because he knew this is just a test and this is just something that's going to come to pass. And as a result, I'm going to achieve something far greater. So he went ahead to fulfill the instruction, although he didn't understand it because he knew its source. And this proves to us. And like I said, this is not unique to Islam. This particular story of Ibrahim alayhi salam, you know, there is difference between the different religions and so on. But... The fact that he was instructed to do something of this nature is agreed upon. Why? Have you ever asked yourself, there are certain things you and I will have to do that may not be so testing as that, but they will definitely be things that we may not immediately understand. I can give you a quick example. Can I give you a quick example? Okay. If a person breaks wind, and they had what is known as wudu. They were upon the condition of ablution. What happens? They need to repeat that ablution, that wudu. But they never ever wash where they broke wind from. Thought of that? Someone might say, but breaking wind. Why did I have to wash my hands and my face? Come on. I'd rather have, you know, washed my backside. Subhanallah. May Allah protect us. But that is a test of Allah. It makes you arrive at a level of physical cleanliness as well as spiritual cleanliness, which sometimes you may not understand immediately, but you will feel it. We feel it. We know it. It's something, it's a condition. When you believe in the Almighty, spirituality overtakes you in a beautiful way. Beautiful. You feel things. You feel spirituality even in a person. And you feel spirituality, subhanAllah, even when it comes to your deeds, you, you want to fulfill your salah because that plug in with Allah. You know, I was reading about something lately, breathing and so on. And I'm thinking to myself, if you have to say to the world today that, you know what, take the, take the name Islam out of everything, but give the Islamic teachings and market them without using the term Islam or Muslims. Believe me, the fastest and best selling. In fact, people are doing that today. 
people who are non-Muslim are actually doing that. They take Islamic teachings, they study Islam deeply, they remove Islam and the Muslims out of the picture and they teach the same thing. They teach mannerisms, etiquettes, social conduct, so many other things, so much so that international law is also derived from the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So much so that so many things are actually taken from it, but they won't tell you that. It's just because people are somewhat fearful. Because Islam perhaps is, so, is growing so quick and is so big that you know what? With us, I have a policy. I don't like to say eh, fastest growing religion. Well, why must I brag about it? For what? Subhanallah. To me, it's my test. Like I said, you come into the world. You came without anything. You're going to be taught things. When you get to the age of puberty, you start asking questions. That is your test. And you know what will happen? You need to find Allah, worship Him alone. And you need to understand that He has sent for you a book. You know, recently I was faced with a certain very embarrassing situation where a man who was a Christian was sitting next to me. And you know, we have a policy of respecting all. We are human beings at the end of the day. So basically, I sat, I greeted him and so on. And we had about one and a half hours together because of the flight. And so he tells me, you know, the Quran is a satanic book. I said, have you read it? He says, I just read a few snippets. I said, snippets, and you're telling me satanic book? He says, well, the Bible is far, you know, more superior and so on. I said, okay, hang on, hang on. We believe in the original manuscripts of all these faiths. We believe in them. And the truth is, I'd like you to swear to your maker that you will read the Quran and you will read the Bible. Read it cover to cover. And you tell me which sounds more heavenly. Because according to you, the only heavenly book is the Bible. According to me, they were all heavenly books, but some have been changed. And the translation is watered down in spirituality in a very, very big way. But I want you to read these books. And you tell yourself, I have to pick up one at the end of me reading these books. And I have to say, this is the one that has more superiority. It is more fit to be the word of God than anything else. You do me that favor. He says, I will definitely do that. Believe me, I don't know what happened as a result. But for me, I told him, my brother, I know what you, if you are a true human being, true human being, and you've read these scriptures, all of them, and you tell yourself, pick out one that is definitely something of the high, the closest that it could be to the word of God. According to you, who's not a Muslim, you will come up with the Quran. I've read the Bible. I've read a lot of scriptures, a lot of manuscripts, a lot of different people's beliefs and so on. Believe me, nothing touches me as much as the Quran. And that's because I'm a believer. Yes, but I want to tell you, even the disbelievers from the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Quran has something in it that is so amazing because it's the word of Allah. I always tell the non-Muslims, do me a favor, read the book and then tell yourself from all the books I've read in my whole life, I have to choose one that I firmly believe is the closest to what could be the word of God. I'm only using this as language because we would be addressing non-Muslims, you know. I mean, I believe it's the word of Allah. I definitely have no doubt in it, not a single speck of it. Never have I and never will I, inshallah. But I want to tell you something. When you're talking to a non-Muslim, you cannot shove things down their throat. But sometimes they have an Allah gives you an opportunity because of some reason for you to reach out to them in a beautiful way. And this is why when I, anytime I get emails or I get messages of people who swear and they call you barbaric, I tell myself, Alhamdulillah. Do you know why? Most of those who accept Islam are those who swore it before. In, in my experience, from my experience, those who really thought it was bad. So when someone says it's barbaric, that's a beautiful step because now they've, Islam is in the limelight to them. It's there. It's now a showcase, do you know? But if a person's not bothered, ah, I don't mind. I'm not even interested. It's harder to get hold of them. But here it's already there. All you got to do is just say, read, keep on reading, find out. You get your questions answered from the right source and let them keep on carry on. Subhanallah. I'm sure you all know brother Anud Van Dun. Subhanallah. Or you may know him, you may not know him. We met him also now in Dubai and his son accepted Islam. This man was responsible for the movie against Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he was belonging to a party that hated Islam and the Muslims and he did whatever was in his capacity at the time to harm Islam and the Muslims. And he says later on, obviously Allah showed him the light. Like I said, he accepted Islam and he says, I feel so happy to read the story of Umar ibn al-Khattab who had gone out to harm and he came back with